How were our personalities meant to work originally? That's the subtopic that we're discussing at this time each day on this program. The main topic is, what is the meaning of life? That is, why are you here? Why am I here? And we've sorted our way in the past eight or nine months through a great deal of the intellectual reasoning connected with the premise that we are here because a supreme being that is intelligent and personal created us. And he created us to be his friends. And that's why you're actually in existence. That's why there's such order and design in your life. And that's why your eyes are able to photograph objects so fast and relate them to your brain. That's why there is so much evidence of construction and of design purpose in the universe. Because it was created by a supreme being who is as intelligent and indeed more intelligent than we are and is certainly as personable as we are in order to make us as persons. And when we began to look for evidence that he had expressed himself somewhere in our world, we of course were driven to that amazing phenomenon in the first century, that man that was unlike all the other great religious leaders, in that he had power to destroy death. And we discovered that his life has none of the imbalance of the usual psychotics who claim they're God's son or they're Napoleon or somebody else, but it had instead great balance and integration, so much so that we often look at his life as the perfect life. And so we began to study what this man, Jesus of Nazareth, said was the explanation of reality and what his explanation of the way we were made amounted to. And we began to discover that, of course, the Creator had made us with the same capacities as himself. And we have actually uh, drawn those out uh, just uh, for clarity on a page. If you have a page in front of you and aren't sitting in the car and aren't in danger of hitting the guy in front of you, if you miss the brakes, if you're at home, uh, then do divide a page into three, uh, three uh, sections. Uh, and uh, in the top section, put the word body, in the second section, put the word soul, and in the bottom section, put the word spirit. And uh, there you have the outline of the three levels of life that the Creator has given us. Physical uh, level on our bodies, the soul comes from the Greek word suke, which is psyche in English and means psychological, psychological part of us, our mind, emotions, our will, and the body and the spirit, which is the innermost part of us. The very essence of you is your spirit. You, when you are alone and constrained by nothing external, that you are and nothing else, one of the old classical writers has said. So we were meant to operate, of course, from the bottom of the page up, but we don't. We operate from the top of the page down. If you draw an arrow from body through soul to spirit, that's the way we operate. We uh, are influenced by what comes through our little eyes, and that sends a signal to our emotions in our soul, and our emotions are either pleased or depressed at that, and they send a signal to our mind, which in turn manipulates whatever circumstances or people or things we need manipulated in order to get the right response through our bodies. And so we operate usually on that level. If you go uh, downstairs in the morning to the kitchen to get breakfast, you look out and you see it's a bright sunny day and your little eyes are delighted with that and send a signal to your emotions, be happy, be happy. And your emotions send a signal to your mind, say good morning, say good morning. And your mind, of course, says good morning to make your wife or your children feel happy too. But uh, it's dreadful. It's a curse. If you come down and you look outside and it's thundering and raining and dark and lowering skies, and looks miserable. 
and uh, it, your eyes send a signal to your emotions, it's a bad day, be gloomy, be sad, this is miserable, life is about to end, commit suicide today, and you send that signal to your mind, and your mind sends a signal to the tongue that goes out to your wife and mm, just groans or grunts at her, no bright good morning, but just a kind of a grunt, this is a miserable day. And so you operate in that vicious little circle, between your body and your soul. And most of us live there completely. We never get any deeper than that. We wonder why we have such a sense of emptiness at times inside where our spirit should be. We wonder at times who are we. We wonder if we're just little robots that respond to external stimuli like Pavlov's dogs. But uh, we can't find any self uh, deep down. I mean, we find plenty of selfishness, but we can't find anything that is us deep down. And many of us live with a tremendous sense of emptiness all the time, right through our lives. It doesn't matter what kind of happiness we try to get from outside. We try to manipulate the circumstances so that we will be happy. Uh, most of us, for instance, have uh, very clear notions of what is a happy day. Uh, Friday is a happy day. We have a phrase in uh, America, uh, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. And uh, when Friday comes up, uh, we, uh, our eyes notice the date on the calendar and realize that we're off work at the end of today for a couple of days, and that sends a signal to our emotions, and our emotions say, be happy, this is Friday, and that sends a signal to our mind, and our mind sends a signal to our, our tongue, eh, say something nice to your boss, say something nice to your colleague, well, isn't it great, we're off today. And that's the way it goes. But Monday morning is an entirely different situation. The eyes look at the calendar, see it's Monday, think of the darkness of Monday starting school after the weekend and that sends a signal to our emotions and our emotions say this is miserable we have a whole wretched horrible week ahead of us and that sends a signal to our mind say something nasty to the person beside you great day this is and so the little circle goes on you notice the interesting thing the will is virtually eliminated completely from that circle and few of us exercise our wills these days most of us operate just in a little uh, vicious circle of response, reflex reactions between the things that we see and the emotions that we feel as a result of those and the way our mind is stimulated to manipulate those things in our favor. Or the people uh, whose approval or disapproval we receive uh, and the emotions that we feel as a result of that, and then the mind's activity in order to gain approval or recognition from them. Or in the sense of circumstances, the circumstances that we're surrounded with, either vacation or Friday, or a game that we're going to see, or a television program that we're going to watch, or a party that we're going to go to, and the emotions of elation or depression, of satisfaction or unhappiness that we feel in response to that, and then the mind's action to try to manipulate those circumstances to bring about the appropriate, pleasant experience that we actually want. But usually the will has very little to do with it, and our soul is utterly under the domination of our body. And we are virtually little animals. And that's why there's an amazing uh, uh, verse uh, in uh, that old book, the Bible, uh, that uh, says that kind of thing, that uh, we were at one time uh, just stimulated by uh, the body and by the soul, that uh, nothing else seemed to affect us but just our body and our soul. And uh, we were actually slaves of those. Uh, I think it runs, uh, It's if you ever want to look at it, it's near the end of the New Testament in a book called Ephesians. And it's Ephesians 2 and verse 3. Among these we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of body and mind. And so we were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. And most of us just follow the desires of body and mind or body and soul. And we never go any deeper than that. We uh, are very dissatisfied with it. We find that we are 
the playthings of our feelings and we're the playthings of our circumstances. We're the playthings of the positions that we own. In fact, many of us feel our positions own us. We joke, you know, that the more positions you have, the more time you spend maintaining them. And uh, we feel that we're often the playthings of people's opinion and we're driven by what people think of us. But we don't seem able to get out of that little, shallow, superficial, vicious circle of life that operates between our body and our souls. And the truth is, of course, our spirits are meant to be alive. They're meant to be alive, but they're dead. Let's look at what is involved in bringing them to life tomorrow.